In this video, we're going to look at what it means when we say that the real numbers under addition and multiplication is a field. A field is a major kind of an algebraic structure, and what it means is that you've got two operations, addition and multiplication, that satisfy a whole bunch of properties. Now, it turns out that the properties are all very familiar to you, and so what we want to do is we want to notice that when we say that R is a field, it means that we have all of the following properties. And in some sense in this class, it means that we have them by axiom. In other words, we're assuming these things are true. The first property is closure. If you add or multiply two real numbers together, you wind up getting another real number. That's what we mean by closure. So A plus B and A times B are both real numbers whenever A and B are real numbers. The two operations are also commutative, which means it doesn't matter which way we order the two elements. If I look at a plus b and I look at b plus a, those are the same real number. If I look at a times b and b times a, those are the same real number. We also have the associative laws. In other words, parentheses don't matter. If I put the parentheses around the first two terms, as in a plus b inside parentheses and add c, that's the same thing as looking at a plus, open up the parentheses and look at b plus c. Same thing with multiplication. The advantage of knowing that uh, the operations are associative means that we can put parentheses in when we want to, and we can delete them when we want to. The next property is called the distributive law. And the distributive law says that multiplication distributes over addition. In other words, a times b plus c is ab plus ac. You've known this for a long time. The only thing that you need to be thinking in terms of that might be new is that the language to describe that law is that multiplication distributes over addition. We also have identity elements. We've got a zero that acts like an additive identity, and we've got a one that acts like a multiplicative identity. And that means exactly what you think it means. Zero plus a is a, and one times a is a, no matter what real number a I pick. Now, it's worth noting that the identity elements axiom does not say that zero and one are unique nor does it actually specify that they are separate elements. Those are technically theorems, and we'll talk about that towards the end of this video. We also have to have additive inverses. No matter what real number I pick, there is an element that I'm going to refer to here as minus a. Don't think of it as just negative one times a. Think of it as minus a. And minus a plus a is always going to be zero. And minus a is technically called the additive inverse of a. It winds up being a theorem that minus a is equal to negative one times a. That's not what the axiom says. The axiom just says minus a exists. We also have to have multiplicative inverses. And multiplicative inverses exist only when a is not equal to zero. So if A is not equal to zero, then there is an element that we're going to call the reciprocal, which is one over A, such that A times one over A is equal to one. And uh, that one over A is called the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal of A. Now, one of the things that I want to be clear about in this particular video is what this set of axioms does not say. So let's think about what this does not say. The axioms do not say directly a lot of the particular properties that you know about um, arithmetic. They don't say that 0 and 1 are unique. That's going to be a theorem. They do not say that zero times anything is equal to zero. That is another theorem. They do not say that minus a is equal to negative one. 
times a. It turns out that that is a theorem. It does not say that the additive inverse is unique. That's also a theorem. It does not say that 1 over a is unique. That is also a theorem. Now, these theorems are technically things that would be proved in an abstract algebra class. So the proofs are from abstract algebra. And it's important to realize that the proofs of these facts apply to every field, not just the real numbers. And uh, we're going to look at a few of the um, proofs of some of these things um, in class, but we're not going to prove all of them. I'm simply wanting you to be aware that there is something to prove. Now, the other thing that I want to point out in this video is that R is not the only field. If you look at Q under its addition and times, this also satisfies every single one of those axioms, and so this is a field itself. So these axioms are not unique to the real numbers. They're not what makes the real numbers the real numbers but they are an important step forward in terms of uh, figuring out what the set of real numbers actually is. What we will be exploring in future videos is a few of these theorems, and we will also continue to build towards what actually describes the set of real numbers as an algebraic structure that is unique inside of mathematics.